front of me, I have everything I need for this painting. I've got my canvas, my paint palette, my kitchen towel, a glass of water. Over here, I have two different size paint brushes, a square shaped sort of flat end brush, and then a smaller pointy brush. I've also got a pencil and a rubber because I'm gonna be drawing in my avocados. So I'm just gonna use these to map them out. And then over here, I have my acrylic paints. So like I always say, it's up to you what colour paints you want to use for your painting. You might want to go more abstract and do a pop-up version of your avocados, or you might want to go more true to the actual colour of an avocado. You can also pick what colour background you want. So I'm just going to spend a moment applying my paints to my palette. To start off with, I've got some titanium white, so I'm just going to add this to one of the dishes in my palette. We're going to be using quite a lot of white just to lighten up some of the shades. Next up, I have a violet colour. I'm going to be going for a purpley pink shade for my background. So I'm just adding some of that to my palette. I then got a primary magenta, which is a very sort of bright, hot pink shade. So I'm just going to add that as well. Next up, I'm going to move over to the colours that I'm going to use for my avocado. So I've actually got three different shades of green here. I've got a cadmium green, so I'm just going to add a small amount of that to my palette. But remember, if you haven't got any green, you can mix up your own using some blue and some yellow. So I'm going to add some blue here. I've got a primary blue. I'm also going to add some cadmium yellow to my palette as well. I always think it's nice to mix up your own colours, especially when you're mixing up greens, just because you can have a little bit more control over the shades that you're creating. I've also got a darker shade of green here. It's more of a teal colour, so I'm just going to add a little bit of that to my palette. And then next up, I want to add a few shades that I can make some brown with for the stone or the pip in the middle of the avocado. So I've got some Cadman and Red, and I'm going to add some black. So as you can see in my palette, I have white, purple, pink, a mid shade of green, primary blue, yellow, a darker teal shade of green, some red and black paint. To start with, I'm just going to use my pencil to draw out my avocados. So I'm going to have these all over my canvas and a couple of them flowing off the sides as well. So I would just use a very, very light touch for this and just start with your main avocado. You want these going off in different directions. So we just want to start with a sort of curved shape for the top and then it comes down and then swerves around and gets a little bit bigger for where the pip or the stone is in the middle. Remember, don't worry if your avocados aren't too neat or straight, we want them to look nice and natural. And you can always go a little bit more abstract with your shapes. So just spend a moment just adding in however many avocado shapes that you like. Again, you might want a few sort of coming off the side of the canvas as well. You might even want to just tip the canvas around and just carry on drawing this around the sides just so it almost just flows over the edge. So if you see the painting from the side, you'll still be able to see the color of the avocado. And remember, don't worry too much because we are gonna be going over these with paints. This is just a little reference for us to work with. you're happy with the placement of your avocado shapes we're now going to move over to the fun bit because we're going to mix up the color for our background like i mentioned you can do any color that you want you might just want to do a block color you might want to add one shade and then sort of mix a few other shades over the top to make it a little bit more textured it's totally up to you all i'm going to do is just dip my bigger brush in the water just loosen up the bristles dab it on the kitchen towel and then moving over to my palette, I'm just going to mix up that shade now. So I'm going to start with a scoop of white as my base, sort of moving that over to a different dish. 
And then to this, I'm just going to start adding a little bit of my purple. I'm just going to give it a good mix. I then might add a little bit of pink to this just to give it a slight pinky tone. I would just say make sure you're mixing up enough paint to cover all of the background. If you don't feel like you've mixed up enough, just mix it up now. So I'm actually just going to scoop up the rest of this white, a little bit more purple, and a little bit more pink, just so I've got plenty of paint to work with. I also suggest adding a couple of drops of water into your paint mixture, just to allow the paint to stay nice and fluid while we're working with it. So all we're going to do now, as soon as you're happy with your shade, is we're just going to focus this all around our avocados. So just filling in the background. And it's up to you. You might want to be quite thick with your paint. You might want to be quite choppy and textured with how you're applying it. Or you might want to be really careful and smooth. It's totally up to you. I would just be careful as you're meeting the sides of your avocado. What I like to do especially with using a sort of square flat end brush, is you can just push the bristles down onto the canvas, let them fan out, and then if you just drag your hand around, it sort of helps you create a nice crisp line with the paint. So just have a little experiment. I often say that brushes are really personal preference. So just use whichever one you feel comfortable with. And remember not to be afraid to add water to your paint if you need to. If you feel like your paint is getting a bit dry and sticky, sometimes just adding that water back in just helps thin it out and almost revives it a little bit. So just add it in and mix it up if you need to. The other thing you might like to do as well while the paint is still wet on your canvas is experiment with mixing some colours over the top. So I might just pick up a little bit of white and kind of blend that in. I might even pick up a little bit of pink and add that on top just to create a few different shades within my background. I'm going for quite a choppy abstract background with mine. So it's quite nice to sort of add, add those colours in so you get a bit of variety. So this is the fun bit, it's really therapeutic, just filling in the background of your painting until you're happy.
You can now just spend some time, if you want to, going back over what you've painted. If you do want to add a few different tones within your background, so I'm adding a little bit of white, kind of just blending it in, but not overly blending it, if that makes sense, just so I can still see sort of sections of it, and even a little bit of pink. And I want it to look really textured, so I'm not being neat with my brush strokes, I'm almost just being quite abstract, dashing them on, creating a few different layers. And then if you want to as well, you can just spend a moment now just painting the side. So anywhere where your background meets the edges, just paint them around just so the whole thing follows nicely around the whole canvas. As soon as you're happy with your background, I would just give your brush a good wash in your water. So now's your chance to decide what kind of colour you want to do for your avocados. So you might want to go more pop art with yours and more abstract and do bright colours, or you might want to do more true colours to a real avocado. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just mix up a few different shades of green, which I'm going to be adding to my avocados. So I'm just going to create these now. So to start with, I want to make my own green. So I'm going to pick up some yellow, and some blue. I'm going to give that a good mix. So I've got quite a dark mossy shade of green here. Now for my next colour I'm just going to need some more white paint. So if you've also run out of white I would just add a little bit more to a spare area of your palette now. For my next shade of green, I'm actually just going to take a little bit of this dark moss green that I've just made, move it over to another part of my palette, and I'm just adding a little bit of white to it and mixing it in just to make a lighter version of that paint so you get more of a sort of minty like colour. Next up, I want to make more of a yellow green. So I'm actually going to go for this colour that I've got just straight out of my tube, which is actually quite bright. I'm going to pop it down on my palette and I'm actually going to add some yellow to it to brighten it up even more. As you can see, I'm just mixing it in with the paint that's already on my brush. I feel like one of the most exciting parts of painting is mixing up your own colours. It gives you a chance to have a little experiment, try something new and create something completely unique to you. Next up, I just want to do a lighter version of this colour, so I'm just scooping up some of that same green, some of that yellow, and this time adding some white. As you can see, I'm mixing up all of these colours next to each other, just so I can see exactly what I'm working with. You can see the different tones. So I'm going to work with these four colours to begin with for my avocado. So naturally, the middle of an avocado is slightly more yellow green in shade rather than the outside, which is a little bit darker where we'll see the skin. So these avocados are chopped in half. So we're just going to be able to see the middle part. So the lighter shades going into the darker shade and then the very, very dark edge where the skin is just visible. And then in the middle, we're going to pop our stone. So for now, I'm just starting with that last shade of green, which I made, which is a nice sort of light pastel yellow green. I'm just going to start adding that to the middle of my avocado. Now I like working with one avocado at a time just because I like the paint to stay wet as I start blending it and adding different tones and textures on top and because I'm going for quite a sort of stylized abstract impressionist version with my avocados which basically means I want to see the texture of the paint in there I don't want them to look too real I'm just going to start adding a few different tones on top of this now it's up to you what brush you use I quite like to do a little dance between each brush depending on which area of the avocado I'm working on so for now I'm just going to stick with my same square brush and all I'm going to do is just pick up a little bit of pure white on the end of my brush and I'm going to focus this in the middle part of my avocado, still keeping with that same shape, but you'll see it just starts to lighten up that middle area. 
I might also experiment and add a tiny little bit of pure yellow into this section as well. It's quite nice when you see sort of dabs of that pop of colour coming through. As you can see, I'm being quite thick with my paint. I'm trying not to overthink it too much. What I'm now going to do is I'm just going to pop down this brush just on the side and I'm going to pick up my slightly smaller brush as I get towards the edges because I want the flesh of the avocado to start darkening up slightly. So I'm just going to pick up some of this shade of green. I'm just going to work it around on top of that last shade, but just along the edges. So we're getting further and further to the edges of our avocado and the green shades are getting slightly darker. I'm then going to pick up this shade over here, which was the one that I knew was going to go over to this shade of green, which is more of a bluey shade of green. It's slightly more earthy in tone. I'm just going to start focusing that towards the edges of the avocado. And this is where you're going to start probably meeting your background. So just have a little look at your own painting and decide if your background is dry. And if it is, you can just start overlapping this paint with it slightly because we want the avocados to look like they're sort of sitting on top of the background. So we don't want any gaps where we see the canvas through. And just carefully pushing the bristles of the brush down, letting them fan out dragging it around just so I can get a nice crisp line with the edge. As you can see, I'm just almost blending it in, just using dabs so I can see the different shades in the paint. quite nice because you can always go back to some of your previous colours as well. If you feel like you need to, you can just keep adding different layers and layers of paint until you fill up all of the different shades. What I'm now going to do is just pick up some of this really dark shade of green, the first one that I made mixing up my blue and my yellow together. I'm just going to focus that carefully along the very outside of the avocado, just where the flesh of the avocado would naturally be darker. Again, as you can see, I'm not being overly neat with this because I quite like seeing all these different tones. I like seeing the sort of paintbrush sweeps. If you want to, this is your moment to sort of pick up some of those first shades again. If you want to just add those back into the middle now, you can. But I'm still keeping with that same shape, I'm following that first shape that I've got. Just blending that paint together. I might even pick up some more white paint and just focus that in the middle. So it's really just about doing a little dance between your brushes and between your paint colours until you're happy with your avocado. So it's just a bit of an experiment really, but it's nice and freeing, especially as we're not trying to be too realistic with these. Again, if you want to, you can always experiment with picking up some pure yellow. Even if you want to, you can pick up some pure blue and sort of swipe that in there. It's just nice to sort of get all of those different tones 
within there, just so they're nice and colourful and bright. Remember that afterwards we're going to pop the stone in the middle, so we're going to be covering this little section here with the, with the brown pip. So as soon as you're happy with your first avocado, you can then move on and do exactly the same thing again. And don't worry if the colours of your avocado vary slightly because you'll find that when you do look at them in real life, they do tend to be slightly different in tone. So don't worry about them all being completely uniform. I would just stick to that same formula of using the lighter shades for this sort of middle part, the inner part of the avocado, and then getting darker and darker until you get to the edge. Just using whichever paintbrush you prefer. So just carry on until you have filled all of them in and then if you want to you can always go back and add a few extra swipes of colour into the previous ones that you've just painted. So this is your chance just to have a little look at all of your avocados, maybe just take a little step back 
and you can add any tweaks. What I sometimes like to do while the paint is still a little bit damp, while it's still sort of drying and it's almost a bit tacky, is just taking a brush that I've just brushed off any excess paint. You can just go back in, sort of help it blend out a little bit. You can also add a little bit more highlight to any of them if you feel like you need to. As long as you've sort of got the lighter shades in the middle going out to the darker shades, you hopefully should be all good. So I'm just going back in and adding a few final sort of touches to the green sections of my avocados. As soon as you're happy with your avocados, we're just going to give our brushes a really good wash. I would now just take this moment, if you want to, you can always change up your water and change up your kitchen towel. And if you want to, you can just make yourself a little bit more space on your palette. So I'm just going to wipe away this section in the middle where I mixed up my greens so I have some space to mix up the browns for my stone. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did with my different shades of green. I'm just going to mix up a few different shades of brown. So I would just say if you've run out of yellow paint, you can just add a little bit more to your palette. And all we're going to do is just start by mixing up our first darker shade of brown. So for this, I'm just going to scoop up some red paint. I'm just going to add a little bit of black to it and give it a good mix. I also suggest just adding the black nice and gradually so you can control the colour that you're making. What I also like to do is just add a very, very small amount of white into this mixture, just because white paint seems to make the paint more opaque, so less see-through. So it gives you a nice sort of solid base. Once you've mixed up your first brown shade, all I'm going to do now is mix up another shade. So I'm just going to pick up some more red and then going to add a little bit of yellow to it and a little bit of blue and give that a mix. Again, I've just kept that same red colour that I had on my paintbrush before. So to this colour, I'm just going to add even more white just to lighten it up. nice just to experiment with these colours. I always find if you're just not happy with the colour, just start again, just adding a little bit more yellow to it. Also a little bit more black. So to my last colour, I'm just going to pick up some of this, move it to a different area of my palette, and I'm just going to add some more yellow to it. Just mixing it in with the paint that was already on my brush. It gives us slightly more of a, a mustard coloured brown. As soon as you're happy with your three shades of brown, we're now just going to move back over to our painting. So I'm actually going to pick up my smaller brush for this. And I'm going to start with this lighter shade that I've got here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus this in the middle section and just paint in the stone. So the stone sort of emulates the same shape as the avocado. So it's a little bit sort of narrower at the top and then it scoops round and is slightly wider at the base. All I would say is just do this nice and slowly. You can almost start smaller than you want to be just because obviously it's easier to make it bigger and bigger. So I would just start slightly smaller Stand back a bit, have a little look, and then decide if you want the stone to be a bit bigger. 
we can then do is similar to how we did the outside of the avocado. You can then just start picking up a few different shades of these browns. You might want to go for one of your darker, more redder tones of brown and just start adding that to the sides. You then might want to pick up a tiny little bit of white and kind of just blob that maybe more towards the middle as a bit of a highlight. So again, we're just doing a little dance between our different shades of paint, just layering it on top of each other until we're happy. And then as soon as you've done one, you can do the same thing to all of your other avocados. You can even pick up a little bit of pure yellow if you want and sort of blob that in there as a little bit of extra tone. So I'd say you can definitely have an experiment with these, with these stones. Just spend a little bit of time adding them to each of your avocados. Again, don't worry if they're not too neat. We haven't gone for a neat vibe with this painting, so feel free to be quite abstract and blobby. And also remember, some of the stones will be slightly bigger in some avocados and they might be a bit smaller in others, so they don't need to be completely uniform, which is always nice. As you can see, I'm not washing off my brush, I'm just picking up these different tones and just adding them on top of each other. You can always go back to them as well, I would say, just work on getting them in and then you can take a step back, have a look and see if you want to add anything else. This is your chance just to take a little step back, maybe look at something else for a moment and then come back and decide if there's anything else you want to add to all of your stones. You might want to blend them in slightly more when they get a bit tacky. You might want to add a little bit of highlight with a small amount of white or yellow. So just have a little look at your own painting and just decide what you would like to do sometimes at this point knowing when to put the paintbrush down is very very handy so I would just add a tiny little pop of highlight to some of them I'm just sort of doing like almost like a comma like shape just on a few of them just so you can see that they look slightly rounded And if you want to on a few of them, you can just take a tiny little bit of this brown paint and just do a very, very small, almost like a little semicircle at the top of some of them, just to show where the little sort of stalk would have been outside on the skin. But it's up to you. You don't have to do it on all of them. You could just do it on a couple of them, just a tiny little mark. <laughs> 